Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday. It's so nice to see you um, here today to worship with us, and uh, thank you for making the time adjustment. I have a few announcements, and the first is that today is All Saints Sunday, and as is our custom, there are candles available on either side of our altar that you may light as you wish in honor and memory of a loved one. Um, The way that they work is there's a little snuffer, candle snuffer, you push the wick up, you can light the wick off of a candle that's already lit, and light another candle. You may do that during any of our hymns today, uh, or during communion if you'd like, Um, so anytime you're ready, you may do that. Today, we remember the saints, particularly from our congregation, who have entered the church triumphant since our last All Saints Sunday. That would be Guy, Chuck, Ginny, Elmer, and Harold. And their pictures are in your bulletin so that you can uh, reflect on the witness that they gave to our congregation. A few other announcements is we get to celebrate today because our congregation has reached another HVAC milestone. So we are now under $30,000, so $29,400 and some odd dollars left for the HVAC campaign. So if you are able to continue to give to that, let's get it paid off and be done. But today we're going to celebrate another $10,000, and I have some candy for you when you exit the church after worship this morning. I am giving you official notice of our annual meeting. Our annual meeting will be held on November the 20th following worship in the fellowship hall. The annual reports, a hard copy, is available today. You can pick that up out um, on the way into church or um, an uh, electronic copy will be emailed to you if you are on our church email list. Um, So watch for that to come. If we run out, we'll print more, but please mark your calendars and plan on attending. If you have not turned in your poinsettia and wreath orders, I know it seems like a long way away, Uh, Christmas seems like a long way away, but if you have not turned them in, those orders are due to the church office by this Thursday. Um, So please get them to Sandra if you're interested in ordering. And the last announcement I have for this morning is that we are looking for volunteers for the live nativity that we hold annually on December the 18th. There is a sign-up list out in the fellowship hall on the sign-up volunteer bulletin board. Uh, You don't have to speak, you just stand still. We're a living car. We can all stand still. So we're looking for some people to help. Um, So please sign up if you're able to help us. It's in the evening. It's cold, but it's really fun. It's a great time of fellowship. So please get involved. Are there other announcements that I missed for the good of the church order? Okay. Seeing none, please. Oh, yes. Yes. Joyce asked if I would announce that one of our saints today, Elmer Hinman, um, is the son of Pauline Hinman, who is a long-term member of this congregation, and he has been living in Florida, and that's probably, probably why you haven't heard a lot about him. Thank you for that. Anything else? Please rise as you're able. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our opening hymn will be the first four verses of For All the Saints. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Let us pray. O God, our eternal Redeemer, by the presence of your Spirit, you renew and direct our hearts. Keep always in our mind the end of all things and the day of judgment. Inspire us for a holy life here and bring us the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our adult choir. Good morning. The first reading is from the book of Job, chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, Then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The word of the Lord. Please turn to page six of your bulletin for the responsive reading of Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Examine my heart, visit me by night, melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. My 
My footsteps hold fast to your well-worn path, and my feet do not slip. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise against them. From the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. The New Testament reading today is from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us to the effect that day of the Lord is already here. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do you not remember that I told you these things when I was still with you? But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God shows you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit, and through belief in the truth. For this purpose, he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace, gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to Jesus, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you? that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. 
When Jesus had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. congregation may be seated. I would invite the children forward for a children's message. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. Did anybody hear me at the beginning of the service? Did you hear me tell you what day today is? What Sunday is it? What did you hear? Anybody can help her? It's All Saints Sunday. What does that mean? What's a saint? Does anybody know what a saint is? Did you say something, Evan? You don't know? You don't know what a saint is. Well, a saint is someone that God loves very much and who, while they're on earth, they follow Jesus and they love Jesus and Jesus claimed them in baptism. And then when they die, they go and they live with Jesus and then they're a saint in heaven. So, do any of you know any saints? No? Well, can, do you know where any saints are in here? Because we're going to go on a scavenger hunt looking for saints. Does anybody know where their saints are in here? All right, can everybody see this fancy wall behind me? Behind me. See that fancy wall? Do you see all those old men up there? Those are all saints. They're all people who did something very important to help other people know and love Jesus, okay? How many of you ever heard of Moses? Moses is up there. That's one that I know you guys study in Sunday school. But now we're going to go looking for some other saints. Are you ready? Can we all get up? We're going to go together. We're going to go on a field trip. We're going to start... We're going to start over here. Does anybody see any saints? Besides there. Living saints. We're looking for living saints. Those are dead saints. Well, they're living. They're just living in heaven. Anybody see any other saints? All right, let's keep walking. Let's go over here. What are you pointing at? Right there? What are you, who? Are you talking about Miss Ann back there? She is a saint. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Come on, let's go this way. Does anybody see any saints over here? Yeah, Yeah, the Smiths, they're saints. Come on, let's keep walking. Let's keep walking. Does anybody see any saints over here? Where? You? Are you pointing at you, Evan? At the Andersons? Yeah, they're saints. Yeah, come on, let's keep walking. Anybody see any saints back here? Yeah. Ooh, Evan. These are all our saints, so let's come around. Can we wave to our saints? Maybe they can wave to us. All of these people that are sitting in the pews back here are people who love you and who are trying to do their very best to show you all about how much God loves you too. So these are all of the saints in our congregation. Come on, keep walking. 
Yeah, they're waving at you. You know why they're waving at you? You know who else is a saint? You all are saints. We're all saints together. So we're going to come over here. These are all our saints. I'm going to have one more lesson for you today. This is a really hard question that if I ask any of the saints out there, they would probably fail. Do you know what this is? It's a candle. Do you know what kind of candle? A holiday candle? Kind of. Yes. A baptismal candle. That's right, Annie. This is called the... Of course, I would knock something over. This is called the Christ candle. And do you know when we light the Christ candle? We light the Christ candle at a baptism. We also light a Christ candle at a funeral. That's when someone dies. And we send them to heaven to be with God. And we light this candle to remember that Jesus is with us when we're saints on earth and Jesus is with us when we're saints in heaven. So we're saints all the time because of Jesus, because Jesus forgives us and loves us. So on the count of three, I want everybody to point to a saint. One, two, three. We're all saints. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for helping helping to use us to show your love to other people. Help us to be a saint, and remember those who love us are saints too. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation in our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My family found its way to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church when I was just beginning confirmation. We love St. Matthew's because it had a lot of kids, it had options for church services, was close to our house, and it had a Boy Scout troop where my younger brother flourished and grew into an Eagle Scout. After I was confirmed, our senior pastor left the church, and our associate pastor, Pastor Jenny, was left to put the pieces back together. Pastor Jenny was a very special person. She loved the church. She had the biggest heart with a special spot for children and youth, and was a miracle, a walking miracle. You see, Pastor Jenny was a second career pastor, In her previous life, she was a drug addict who made more bad choices than political ads on TV these days. Somewhere along the line, with the help of God, she was able to pull herself out of addiction and instead of continuing down the path of self-destruction, decided to dedicate herself to the God who made her worthy of living life and to serve his church as a pastor, proclaiming grace to all those who would listen. What I remember most about Pastor Jenny coming to our church at first was the fact that she was missing several teeth, which she promised to have fixed as soon as she had dental insurance, and she did. Most interestingly, though, to my friends and to me, what we found interesting about Pastor Jenny was that she had a full-size tattoo on her back from her neck all the way down to her waist. We never knew a pastor who had a tattoo or who was a woman. We didn't know pastors could be fun. Well, until her second call, when she was wanting to get married, but struggling to find a date, and she advertised on the congregation's outdoor marquee board, female pastor seeking a husband. The church was packed the next Sunday. But what was even more amazing about Pastor Jenny was her love and acceptance of all people. As I already mentioned, Pastor Jenny never had any children of her own but she had plenty of children. She fostered any child who was struggling and needed a place to stay, including one of the most difficult children in our youth group. She was also determined to hold our youth program together in the midst of transition, and boy, did she ever. Everything that I know about church, about what church should be and what church is, I learned from Pastor Jenny. We wanted a lock-in. She slept on the floor in her late 40s. We wanted to go to the National Youth Gathering, she took us. We wanted to do service projects, she created them. We wanted to have a vibrant Sunday school, she helped to make it happen. 
I wanted to preach. And she helped me write my very first sermon at the ripe old age of 13. She molded, shaped, and encouraged us to be all that we could be. And long after she was run out of our church by an overbearing older male pastor, she kept in contact with us and kept encouraging us to be the people that she knew God made us to be. In fact, from my little youth group of about 20 of us, there are three of us, all females, who now serve in the same church that Pastor Jenny knew and loved, the ELCA, as ordained pastors. One other, a male, serves the church in a youth ministry capacity. Pastor Jenny continued to serve the church in a second call in Ormond Beach, Florida, and a third call in Tennessee. When she put in her mobility papers for her third and final call before being forced to resign from the roster on disability, Pastor Jenny called me and asked if I would serve as one of her pastoral references. Me, her kid. I was honored to do so. There are so many more things that I could tell you about Pastor Jenny. I could tell you about her infectious laugh or the best hug that she gave. I can tell you about the time that she was mugged outside of a grocery store for simply wearing a collar as a female clergy person in the good old South. I could tell you about the time that she wasn't afraid to go head to head with her male colleagues and stand up for what she believed in. But what I want you to know most is that through her, I knew God. Just two weeks ago, at the age of 66, Pastor Jenny died suddenly. The news of her death was a shock to me and left a hole in my heart. I cried. The world is so much darker without her witness, without her undeniable faith. She's one of the best people that I was lucky enough to know. But I also know that God was preparing a place for Pastor Jenny. And when it was her time, Jesus scooped her up and carried her to her forever home. A home with a new body, one that would never give out on her. It's a home with great happiness and joy. A place where there's no more anxieties or worries or imperfections. A place where there is no more tears or sadness. A place that is filled with hope and worship and her beautiful singing voice. A place where she will wait for me to one day meet her and take my place beside of her in the great river of life. Today is All Saints Sunday. And we remember all of our Pastor Jennies. We remember those people that we loved and adored who transitioned from saints on earth to saints in heaven. We remember Ginny and Guy, Chuck, Harold, and Elmer, and our own saints from our church family who entered into this church triumphant this past year. We remember our grandparents and our parents, our spouses, our siblings, aunts and uncles, cousins and friends who we miss tremendously. And on this day, We give God thanks for their witness, for the ways in which they showed us Jesus, for the ways in which they loved us and we loved them. We thank God that he understands our loss and mourns with us, just as he did at the grave of Lazarus. And we thank God that he has called them out of their grave into eternal life. God gets us. He knows our hearts and he knows how hard grief can be and how it can hit us at the most random of moments in time. Because where there was great love, there is tremendous grief. And because God knows this, he went out and prepared a way for us to be with the saints all the time. Are you wondering what I'm talking about? You see, God has given us the gift of communion, a gathering at the table where at the same time we are partaking in Jesus' meal, so are all of our loved ones in heaven. It's a way that we can still be with them week after week. It's a way that we can stay connected. It's a way that we can know that they're safe and cared for. It's a way that we can be assured of God's promise that one sweet day we will all be together. God is so gracious. He's so loving, so accepting. He is so forgiving and so full of grace. God is always faithful. He always keeps his promises. And today we can be thankful for God's truth. The truth that God has gone out ahead of us and prepared a place just for us, gathered at that river of life, singing praises next to our loved ones, worshiping him with the best sunsets, and gathering at the table with the saints on earth and the saints in heaven. What a promise God has given to us. What a future we're going to have. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue our work on this earth, may we always be mindful of the great cloud of witnesses that are leading us and walking alongside of us 
on our journey. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 474, found in your green hymnal. Please rise as you're able. Let us confess the faith of the church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across every time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, You raise up leaders to guide your people, kindle in them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, be with our country this week as we vote to elect new officials. Give our candidates a mindset of service, love, and compassion for all people. Bring peace to the process. Help to unify our country. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional inclusion among us, welcoming the gifts of adults and children. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, you bless those who are poor and hungry. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. Be with all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Especially this day, we pray for those on our prayer list, for Amelia and Alex Lepo, Angie Forey, Mary Weaver, Steve Ely, Tom Lease, Laverne Bortner, Jim Bailey, Holly, Sandy Trone, Joe Dorenfeld, Ginny Hansen, Ryan Ference, Sue Smith, Bonna Kraut, Bob Horton, Brent Aki, Brian Smith, Carol Hoover, Faye Wagaman, Paul and Nancy Sharp, Tom Sterner, Teresa Amspacher, Phyllis Myers, Sally Hoover, Eula Schellenberger, Terry Greer, and all those we now name aloud are in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, we remember in thanksgiving all those who have died since our last All Saints Sunday in this church family. We remember Guy Brown. Ginny Gensler, Chuck Hayes, 
Elmer Hinman, Harold Ort, and all of our loved ones who now rest with you. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another.
pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, and mercy for our fallen world you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord of the living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God.
Please rise as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is the second half of For All the Saints, verses 5 to 8. Go in peace, serve the Lord.
Happy birthday.